All right, Mr. Ahmed here for 7.1. We're going to start up chapter 7 today, which involves polynomial equations and factoring. Not going to lie, this is going to be one of our tougher units. As you can see, it's pretty long. We're going to have a lot of objectives that we're going to be going through here. So we'll break this apart into a couple quizzes, but uh, make sure you're doing a good job in your homework as we progress through this, because like I said, this is definitely a tougher unit. So our goal for today for 7.1 is to add and subtract polynomials, but before we can add and subtract polynomials, we have to know what a polynomial is. And in order to define a polynomial, first we have to define a monomial. And a monomial is a number, a variable, or the product of both. So examples of monomials would be something along the lines of just a number. Let's just say, for instance, 7. 7 is a number, so that is a monomial. A variable is also a monomial. So just something like y, that would be a monomial. Um, another example of a monomial is the product of variables. So something like x, y. We are multiplying x times y. So that is also a monomial. And the product of numbers and variables is also a monomial. So something along the lines of 3x squared y. That would also be a monomial. It's just one term. We're multiplying a number and variables. Things that are not a monomial are something that has a variable for an exponent. So something like 3 to the x, that is not a monomial because the exponent is a variable. Um, this one is not a monomial because it is separated by a plus sign. So essentially, this includes a sum. So a sum or difference is not a monomial. It can only be one term. Uh, something that has a negative exponent is not a monomial. So something along the lines of 3x to the negative third, that would not be a monomial because that would put the variable in the denominator. And finally, the last example of something that is not a monomial is if we just have a term that has a variable in the basement, so something like 4 over y, that would not be a monomial because we're dividing by a variable. So, uh, pretty much in summary, we're looking for uh, identifying a monomial. We're going to have variables, we're going to have numbers, uh, we can have exponents, but we can't have negative exponents. We can't have variable exponents, and we cannot have a variable in the denominator. Okay? So, a polynomial is a monomial or the sum of monomials. So a polynomial could be a monomial, just one term, but typically we're going to see it as more than one term when we define it as a polynomial. So something along the lines of 3 plus x, I got a little carried away there with my plus sign, 3 plus x, that is a polynomial because there's two terms. Another example could be something like x squared minus 4. That is a polynomial because there are two terms. This is a monomial, and this is a monomial. Okay, they're separated by a plus sign or a minus sign. That makes it a polynomial because there's more than one term. A monomial has only one term. So something like 3x squared y to the fourth, that is a monomial because there's only one term. It's not separated by a plus sign or a minus sign. A binomial is a polynomial with two terms. So something like x squared plus x. Separated by a plus sign or a minus sign, we have two terms. The first one's x squared, the second one is x. And a trinomial is a polynomial with three terms. So something like x squared minus 2x plus 3. We have the first term, the second term, the third term. That is a trinomial. So that kind of wraps up our definitions here for identifying a polynomial and a monomial. The next thing we need to talk about is its degree. The degree of a monomial is the sum of all variables' exponents. Okay, So we got to keep in mind, I'm just going to write a monomial down. We're going to say 3x squared y. We have to remember that y is raised to the first power. So for me to find the degree, I add up all the variables' exponents. So this is a 2 and a 1. So the degree is 2 plus 1, which is 3. So the degree of this is 3 because we have to add these up. Don't forget about this one. y to the first, x to the second, 2 plus 1 is 3. The degree of a polynomial 
is the highest degree of any of the terms that are in the polynomial. So for example, if I have y to the third plus x squared minus 4x squared y to the fifth, we have to figure out the degree of each term. So the degree of the first term is 3, the degree of the second one is 2, and the degree of the last one is 5 plus 2, which is 7. So the degree of the polynomial is 7. We take the highest degree when we talk about the whole polynomial. So first couple examples here, we're going to find the degree of the polynomial. So again, we count up the sum of the variable's exponents. We have a 2 and a 5, so the degree is 7. 2 plus 5 is 7. The degree here, the only variable is a, that's raised to the first. So the degree is 1. Here, we have an x to the second, so we only count up the variables, so the degree is 2. This one has no variables, so the degree is 0. Okay, so just a number, the degree is 0. All right, standard form of a polynomial. A polynomial is in standard form when the monomials are arranged from the highest to the lowest degree, left to right. Okay, so we want like the x squared before an x. We want a y to the third before a y. We put the degrees in descending order when we read from left to right. So here, we're going to first put it in standard form. We're going to find the degree of the polynomial, not the monomial, the polynomial. And then we'll classify it as a binomial, trinomial, or a monomial. Okay? So, first, standard form, highest degree to lowest. This has a degree of 1, that has a degree of 0, so it's already in standard form, 2x plus 7. The degree is the degree of the highest term, which is 1, because this is x to the first, so the degree is 1. This is a binomial because it has two terms. Okay, two terms. All right, this one's not in descending order, okay? I have a y to the second, then a y. So the y to the second has a higher degree. So that needs to come first. It is positive, it stays positive. So we have three y to the second. The next highest degree is the y to the first. So we have plus y, and then we have our constant five plus five. So now we have it in standard form. It goes in descending order of degrees. We take the highest degree for the polynomial, which is two, and this is a trinomial because it has three terms. We don't call a four-termed one a quadomial. All right, we just go with the monomial, binomial, trinomial. That's all we'll be going to for when we classify them by type. All right, the next one. Highest degree appears to be this b to the sixth. It's negative, so it needs to stay negative. Then we have a plus 5b squared, and then we have a plus 3b. It's now in descending order. The highest degree is 6, three terms, so it is a trinomial. All right, we got that. Now we're on to our adding and subtracting, okay? To add polynomials, pretty much all we have to do is remove the parentheses, and then we combine the like terms. When we combine like terms, add or subtract, the exponents don't change, okay? Uh, 5x squared plus 6x squared is just 11x squared. 2x plus 3x, 5x. So, typically I really don't usually rewrite these and get rid of the parentheses, all right? I, I can see I'm adding, nothing's gonna change. I'm taking this polynomial, which is a trinomial, plus the other trinomial, and we're gonna have to combine the like terms, okay? So if you don't wanna rewrite this one when you're adding, I'm okay with that. So when we identify the like terms, keep in mind like terms have the same variables raised to the same power. So I see I have some x squared. So first I gotta combine the x squareds. I got a three x squared, I got a six x squared. That adds up to nine x squared. Next we add up the x's. We have a six x and a three x. 6 plus 3 is 9, so we have a 9x. The variables do not change. And finally, we have the 5 and the negative 4. 5 plus negative 4 is 1, so plus 1. We have finished adding the two polynomials together. I can't go any further. Keep in mind, we can't add x squareds with x's. Yes, we can multiply them. We cannot add them. Subtracting polynomials is a little bit tougher, though, okay? 
First, we're going to have to distribute the negative 1 to the polynomial being subtracted. Then we will combine like terms. Okay? Well, we'll combine by adding the polynomials. I got a little excited there. I, I kind of said combine like terms, which is adding the polynomials. Okay? So here's a subtraction problem. Don't be lazy on these. I don't want to see you just trying to put a minus sign, a minus sign. We got to distribute. We're going to distribute the negative one. So the first one does not change. I have 2x squared plus 3x minus 4. Now I distribute the negative 1. So this is going to become a negative 8x squared. Here I have a minus 7x. And here I'd have a plus 3. So do not be lazy. Rewrite it or you will make an error. Now we can combine our like terms. So I have a 2x and a negative 8x squared. 2 plus negative 8 is negative 6x squared. Try and put these in descending order when you do it. All right, put it in standard form. Uh, we don't want to put the x first if we can help it. Okay, so now we have a plus 3x and a minus 7x. 3 plus negative 7 is negative 4x. And then we have a negative 4 and a positive 3. Okay, negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. We got it. Go ahead and push pause and give the U tries a shot. All right, first one. Hopefully you had some good success. This is an addition problem, so I can just add. Like I said, I'm, I'm not going to make you rewrite the plus signs, but we should rewrite the minus signs. All right. So here I have a 4x and a 5x squared, so that's going to add up to 9x squared. Negative 3 and a negative 4x is negative 7x. Then we had a 7 and a negative 8, which is negative 1. Here for the minus, make sure you distribute the negative. So rewrite the problem. Negative 5x squared plus 6x minus 3. Now we're going to distribute the negative, so that turns to a negative 8x squared plus 4x and a minus 7. Now we can combine our like terms. x squareds first. Negative 5, negative 8 is negative 13x squared. 6x, 4x is 10x. Combine those up. Then we have a negative 3 and a negative 7. Negative 3 and negative 7 is negative 10. We got it. All right, that's it for today. Have a good one.